wa Zambia One Nation, a warm welcome to the next news and thank you so much for joining us. The headlines. RDA happy with pace of works on Lusaka and Dolal Road. 5,000 people to benefit from wetland cropping exercise in Kaputa. Plus, fast aged to intensify training programs in rural areas. I'm trust member and my sign language interpreter is Jennifer Shalyonda. The news in detail. Road Development Agency Head Co Communications and Corporate Affairs, Anthony Mloa, says the agency is happy with the pace of works on 327 kilometers project. The road project is being undertaken by Macro Investment Oceans of China. And the engineering institution of Zambia has called for increased local involvement of local contractors in projects awarded to foreign contractors. More in this report. Works on the 327 kilometer Lusaka Ndola Road are in full swing. The government wants this vital economic route of regional significance upgraded into dual carriageway within three years. The Road Development Agency, RDA, is confident that the concessionaire Macro Oceans Investment Consortium, MOIS, of China will deliver the project on time. Civil works are ongoing. Uh, you know, uh, we've started uh, the, we, of course, the, the clearing and grabbing has been ongoing. And uh, in most cases, the contractor is even working in the night, you know, just to ensure that we catch up on time. So that's how serious we, we are. Meanwhile, the Engineering Institute of Zambia, EIZ, is calling for increased involvement of local contractors in projects of such magnitude as the Lusaka and Dollar Duo Carriageway. This project is being funded uh, um, substantially using uh, local funds, which are pension funds. So unlike in the past when we had finances coming outside through foreign direct investment with a number of conditions, we expect that now for leverage to negotiate a larger percentage of uh, uh, local participation. Instead of the 20% that normally talk about, we want something more like 50%. Um, this means in, in supervision projects, supply of goods, and uh, inputs on the project itself should be reinforced to ensure that there's a huge portion for local content. The 650 million US dollar Lusaka and dollar road is a vital economic route connecting Zambia to the Democratic Republic of the Congo and the port of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania and South Africa, facilitating regional trade. Victor Mwela for the News in Lusaka. And government has given in one week ultimatum to Kampe Investment Limited, the company engaged to build Chifumpande's palace in Senga Hill District to move on site. Geoffrey Peary reports that Senga Hill District Commissioner Elizabeth Ngoma has expressed disappointment that no works has been done at the over 3 million Kwacha project site five months after handover and commissioning. This is the site where government plans to construct a palace for Chief Mpande of the Mambwe people of Senga Hill District. However, no progress has been made on the palace, which will be constructed at a cost of 3 million Kwacha using the Constituency Development Fund, CDF. This is five months after government handed over the site and commissioned construction works. Sengahiu District Commissioner Elizabeth Goma, who toured the project site in the company of other officials, is disappointed with the development. I'm just disappointed because uh, if this project was uh, scheduled to, to finish in um, August, uh, according to the engineer and up to now, this is just a foundation that we found. So I'm not, I'm not very happy because as government, we want the speed implementation of projects. Whenever a contractor is given a project, they have to put much effort to make sure that they are done within the stipulated time. I'm urging this contractor who is building the palace here to be on, on site next week. The community is equally disappointed. They are also disappointed. Because the contractor must show the integrity. Mm. Eh? And he, as he, he is supposed to save the president who, who has even sent them here. Earlier, Director of Engineering at the Senga Town Council, 
They viewed that the contractor was given down payment for mobilization. The cement is there and still what is remaining on site is the, the aggregates, which is not there. That's what is currently mobilizing. He was paid the advance payment on 30th March. So from 30th March, we're expecting maybe to, to find the structure, maybe a slab level somewhere there. But as you can see, but for, I, I contacted the contractor. The, the expression that he gave is that he's mobilizing aggregates. The palace will come with a meeting room and houses for retainers, among other structures. Geoffrey Piri reporting for Zanis in Senga Hill District. A non-government organization, Fountain of Life, has expressed interest to construct a one-by-three classroom block at Kabamba Secondary School in Serenja District of Central Province. Fountain of Life co-founder Mark Semar says his organization will, before the end of of 2024 construct the classroom block to help address the educational needs of learners. Details in this report. Welcome to Kawamba School. Welcome. As enrollments increase due to the free education policy embarked on by the government, a non-governmental organization has expressed its intentions to construct a one by three classroom block to help address challenges related to classroom space at Kabamba Secondary School in Serenja District. Speaking during a ceremony held at Kabamba Secondary School, Serenja District Education Board Secretary Harry Sirungwe gives this picture surrounding the school. Looking at the least about 21 kilometers to the former, no secondary school anywhere near here. Government thought it wise to bring to introduce two secondary schools, just building a one by three classroom block. So these schools were seated on the on the primary section. So after building that block, which is a one by three, the, it can only cut for grade 10, 11 and 12. So for grade eight and nine, they're squatting at the primary school. In response, Fountain of Life co-founder Maximo made the following commitment. I certainly understand the importance of education. I certainly want to make sure that we continue to share the need here with our donors, with our friends, with our sponsors, so that we can raise the funds to build the much needed classroom block, the one by three that you're looking for here for the secondary school. The development elected Serenja Town Council Chairperson Stivas Mulumba. We are happy uh, this commission. This is the starting of good things in, Chikaw in Chief Kawamba, at, especially at the Kawamba Secondary School. Serenja District Commissioner Paul Masua commended outgoing Minister for Central Province Princess Kasune for leading the foundation to the Kawamba community. There are many places where the provincial minister could have taken the donors, but she decided to bring them here. Chief Kabamba emphasizes the importance of education. Thelma <laughs> Kabwe is the area councillor. Thanks to Fountain of Life Africa, this new classroom block will not only provide a conducive learning environment for our students, but also serve as a beacon of hope for the entire community. <laughs> reporting for Zanis News, Serenji. In other news, Eastern Province is exploring diversifying its economy through formalizing and strengthening operations of the mining sector. The province has resolved to adopt the local authorities' mining license market principle that allows councils to facilitate the formalization of, farm, of mining activities. Details in this report. The economy in Eastern Province has mainly depended on agriculture, despite harboring potential in the mining sector. With over 600,000 artisanal miners who are mainly operating illegally, the sector remains unexploited for a number of reasons. If you go to that prison now, the prison is flooded with illegal miners. Mm -hmm. It's not the problem of the miners. I feel it's the problem of the Ministry of Mines because they are not providing the necessary information to the people to be miners. Mm. And so, also the artisanal licenses, there's been no much sensitization to the community oh, yes. on how to acquire it, how oh. much money is involved, how long it takes. What they need is drones, because it's dangerous. How does somebody just enter? You don't know what is inside in those tunnels. <laughs> These are the issues Migodi Oric Limited is offering solutions to through the adoption of the local authorities' mining license market principle. Adzawa miners can go to a local authority, which then will own a large scale mining license. 
subdivided into axonal licenses. ASM cooperative and can meet the conditions that the council has. But those large-scale mining licenses will be serviced by the councils environmentally and necessary expertise. So the same services that the councils are known to provide at the public markets on the mining side, they will now provide on the mining sites that will eliminate the need of Adzano miners on their own to go online where they don't have smartphones, they don't even know how to go online. A resolution to go in this direction was meant at this meeting officiated by the Provincial Permanent Secretary. Adzano small scale miners in the provinces sell their gold for as low as 400 kwacha per gram to the middle people who later sell the same for more than 2,000 kwacha in Lusaka. It's no wonder that our artisanal small scale miners have been mining for years without any meaningful change in their livelihoods. Let's seize the opportunity to garner support for strategically positioning the local authorities as government at the local level to mitigate the regulatory uncertainties that affect both exploitation and exploration of critical minerals for sustainable social economic development of our progress. Abigail Kashweka reporting for Zanis in Chipata District. Kawa District Commissioner Lennox Shimwambua has advised beneficiaries of the social cash transfer and other social protection programs to use the funds prudently by providing houses or starting businesses. Mr. Shimwambua says this in order to improve the quality of life for the beneficiaries. Shalon Wadlia filed in this report. Social cash transfer is a vital tool for providing financial support to the most vulnerable in the society. These funds not only help recipients meet their immediate needs, but also empower them to invest in their future. Government has advised beneficiaries to use the social cash transfer sustainably. So to develop a country, it needs a response from the citizen. It's extremely important. Uh, even at household level, you, there's going to be a level of sacrifice. So with those beneficiaries, they have to do a bit of sacrifice to, to, to wave off a bit of luxury and put part of that money into productive ventures. Start creating value with what you're getting. Do some little bit of extension of your homes, homesteads, and so on and so forth. Start getting to agriculture. That's the way to go, and I think that is, uh, that is the legacy President Akainde Tsai wants to do. Patrick Muzala is visually impaired and has been a social cash transfer beneficiary for three years. He invested the funds in building houses to rent out. Social cash transfer, na tam pire pari eight hundred, pire valu pire eight hundred. Epo na tam pire. Kwe na ile tu afurisha. Pa kalamba fiesa na ile tu afurisha social cash transfer. Nge fifi ni mwamona, akande dia, akande sunga, akande dia, akande sunga. Emo na kurishenei na inga, damu social cash transfer. Henry Mwewa is critically disabled and is using the social cash transfer to build a house and take his children to school. Henry 
bones for the watch and second death. Social cash transfers are not just a lifeline for survival, but can be used for innovation and growth. Sharon Walia reporting for Zanis in Kabwe. We have more news to come after this message. Zambia Today is a program that keeps you informed on various government policies and programs. Join us every Tuesday at 18 hours on Zanis TV, Topster Platform, Channel 6 DTT and 458 DTH. Don't miss. Medit is a program that delves into the many success stories of different people from all walks of life. Watch How I Made It on Zanis TV every Thursday at 18.30 hours on the Topster channel, channel 6 DTT and channel 458 DTH. The Issue is a program that looks at topical issues happening in the country. Watch The Issue every Friday at 19.30 hours, only on Zanis TV, Channel 6 DTT and Channel 458 DTH on Topstar. Don't miss. Welcome back. You're still watching Zanis News. Chasefu District Commissioner Jimmy Piri has urged farmers and producers in Chasefu District of Eastern Province to preserve some of their produce for household consumption to enhance food security. The District Commissioner said these at the agricultural and commercial show held at Emosa Primary School grounds under the theme Creating a Competitive Future. We have more in this report. As the country grapples with the impacts of the drought-induced food crisis, Chasefu District Commissioner Jimmy Piri has urged farmers and producers across Chasefu District to prioritize the welfare of their households and communities by maintaining food supplies. The District Commissioner said this when he addressed Chasefu residents at the agricultural and commercial show held at Emusa Primary School ground under the theme Creating a Competitive Future. We all know that agriculture is a business, but be mindful of your food security. As you decide on the quantities to sell from your produce, do not sell everything. If you want to sell your mess, sell your mess to FRIA. And FRIA has started buying mess at 330 quarter per bag. The advantage of selling to FRIA is that when you sell to FRIA, you keep the mess who fumigate it in times of hunger, we will still give you that maze as a relief maze. And senior chief Magodi Six encouraged farmers to continue working hard and urged them to guard their produce jealously. Well, Meanwhile, local farmer Kefas Banda called on the government to boost farming inputs in order to enhance productivity. When it was about the government, in Gaikira, the Teresa Stali, Zanis News, Chesapeake District, Eastern Province. Kaputa District in Northern Province is earmarked to benefit from the images wetland cropping with a total allocation of 5,000 beneficiaries. Unlike other districts that experienced droughts, Kaputa was affected by floods which destroyed crops. We have more in this report. Unlike other districts that experienced drought, Kaputa in Northern Province was affected by floods which destroyed crops in the area. This is why government is implementing the emergency wetland cropping program to avert the pending food shortage, with Kaputa District earmarked to receive the highest allocation of 5,000 beneficiaries in the province. 
Martin Wansa, who is Northern Province Acting Community Development Officer, visited Mukpakatandula's village to monitor the ongoing selection of potential beneficiaries. Yeah. So, program Community members are ready to implement the program. The program is ready to if something is very sad, we are not going to be able to do it. We are not going to be able to do it. We are not going to be able The Department of Community Development paid the greatest call on Chief Mukupakatandulati's palace, while Kaputa District Commissioner Kosma Smoya pledged to closely monitor the emergency wetland program. I want to follow it to the latter, that uh, this project is implemented, make sure that we monitor the, the activities. We are willing to make money because we know this time maize is white copper. Helen Bwale reporting for Zanis in Kaputa, Northern Province. The reformed church in Zambia in Chadiza has called for unity in the country. Shadiza Reformed Church in Zambia, Reverend Boyd Daka, says unit of purpose should be prioritized for the good of the nation's development as it is one of the pillars governing the country's details in this report. Johanne John Azatu, Johanne 17, verse 8. 13, 14. Children number 27, menena berela ambuya yesu, arukamba kuti, anabuela pasipano, Unity of purpose and love is what the church wants. As Eastern Province Minister took time to attend church at Reformed Church in Zambia in Chanida, he emphasized on oneness. <laughs> Mambo analankula poyamba pamene wanyamuka chabe kuti one Zambia one nation. Chifuwa chamene mambo analu tantauza ni kutantauza kuti ise ndisebantuwa mozi. One Zambia, one nation, one people. Ndisebantuwa mozi kulibe mitundu ibili olo itatu. Kulibe mitundu ukulu olo ngono mnomziko latu la Zambia yai. Chadiza MP and Chief Mlolo condemns tribalism. So politicians were very selfish people and cheap. So Steve Nikiro Tatora Red Mundari, so Maru Kamba Zam Tundum Zikomat. Chifqua, this is in is a very fatal ground. Ninjira in a wing at the best foot way cool, you can pingo, Mukakara Muribeva and Roman Zambo preaching her. Mukapezi, there's no there's no sheep, the sheep will be scampered. You'll be shepherd without the without sheep. United Church of Zambia Northern Presbytery Bishop Mabin Mulenga has challenged leaders in the country to be instruments of peace and unity. Bishop Mulenga said this during the induction ceremony of Reverend Agnes Zimba, who was ordained as minister in charge for Senga Hill Congregation at a ceremony held at Senga Mission 
Secondary School. Bishop Lenga also called on the newly inducted minister to perform her duties with diligence. Namusokwe Buembia gives us more in this report. It was a joyous moment for the United Church of Zambia UCZ Senga Hill Congregation in Senga Hill District as Christians gathered to witness the induction ceremony of Reverend Agnes Zimba as a minister in charge of the congregation. UCZ Northern Presbytery Bishop Mabin Mlenga, who conducted the induction, advised the Reverend Zimba to perform her duties with diligence. Bishop, Bishop Mlenga also had a message for the newly inducted Reverend and church members. To be the instrument of peace and unity, you have to be very careful before you are recruited in the movement of frustrated souls and begin to drive the agenda you may not know and to a ishwaleza afwira aimi ni na nukutila ishifwira na ave ichi wommelo ocha lupato ine mfwira na ava ichi wommelo ocha kwaleza both Grace Womwanza, who officiated at the event, and Senga Hill Consistory Vice Secretary Doris Campbell, pledged the support to the newly ordained Reverend. Reverend Agnes Zimba may be simple looking, but the truth of the matter is that she carries the heavenly mandate of fulfilling God's mission in this community. She will therefore need our support in every way. We are confident those are the values which will help us move to higher levels as Senga Hill Mission Congregation. You have a huge task to supervise and ensure successful completion of the running projects at the congregation. But we pledge the support of the executive and all the members. Meanwhile, the Reverend Zimba is ready to save the congregation. For Zanisi in Singa Hill District, Namsokwebwemia. And finally in sports, a match official in Singa Hill District of Northern Province has appealed to football administrations in the country to consider training match officials in rural communities to enable them meet the required standard. Christopher Sechangwa, who is an, an untrained referee, noted that many match officials in rural areas are struggling to meet the standards due to lack of knowledge and exposure. Namusokwe Bwembia reports from Senga Hill that Sechangwa made the appeal after officiating at a local football match in the area. Sports not only help to promote physical fitness but also allows people to make careers out of it. But people in rural areas such as Senga Hill often struggle to achieve this due to lack of sporting facilities and exposure. This is why communities in Senga Hill are organizing themselves by forming football clubs to compete against each other and also offer entertainment to the masses. <laughs> Christopher Sichangwa, who officiated this entertaining game, wants football administrators to help train match officials in rural areas. And Riverside football team coach praised his team for giving Mambo mission a tough time. But 
watu wa fish yako watu sako sponsor kuri friends of you binga binga kwa ata wino pako chite changaro ya po chawam mko andefu wa bonse the game between mambo mission and riverside ended to new in favor of riverside reporting for zanis in senga hill district na msokwe buendia well, that report from Namsokwe brings us to the end of our news. But before we go, a recap of the stories that made headlines. RDA happy with pace of works on Lusaka and Dolal Road. 5,000 people to benefit from wetland cropping exercise in Kaputa. Plus, fast aged to intensify training programs in rural areas. Well, that's all we had for you from our news desk on behalf of my sign language interpreter, Janfa Silionda, and in the Tazanese production team, I've been your presenter, Trust Member. It's goodbye for now.